Now, DNR has gone on to interpret that using kind of a funny term, um, and it's called a Q710, and it's a strange term used by hydrologists like myself. But what it means is it's the flow in a stream that takes place for a seven-day period once every 10 years. It's basically a drought condition. It originally was developed in the wastewater field to figure out what was the lowest level of pollutants, or excuse me, the maximum level of pollutants that a treatment plant could discharge. Um, but DNR has gone on recently, and we have not been able to get any documentation of where this is justified. Um, but they use this term Q710. Um, and the bottom line is for Rest Lake, um, they have calculated that number to be 40 cubic feet per second. So keep that sort of in the back of your heads. We'll talk about that later. Um, so they're telling Excel Energy, at all times you must pass at least 40 CFS of flow. That's cubic feet per second. <coughs> so let's go over what DNR is proposing here. Um, so this is quoted right out of the environmental impact <laughs> assessment that DNR wrote on this project. Uh, it was originally uh, put out to the public in September of last year. Uh, comments on it uh, were closed uh, the end of December of 2012. And uh, as of May of 2013 this year, DNR has certified this environmental assessment um, and is now proceeding into uh, changing the order. And that's what the hearing will be about in August. Um, I bring that up is, is that basically the comment period on this assessment document is over. Um, so um, what they state in there is the department is proposing to issue a new operating order that would result in water levels and flows upstream and downstream of the dam that closely match, and I've underlined this, the natural pattern of levels and flows of northern Wisconsin flow through lakes and rivers. So their goal is to get back to what their perception of what is natural. <coughs> they go on to say, to accomplish this, uh, the extent and timing of the winter drawdown would need to be eliminated or greatly reduced, um, and a more natural flow pattern would be passed downstream of the dam, and ramping rates would be specified for both chain water levels and downstream flows to avoid quickly fluctuating water, excuse me, water levels. And when they're talking about changing water levels, they don't state it, but their intent here is they're talking about downstream of the lake, not the lakes themselves. So in their environmental assessment, they go through basically four alternatives. Um, one is to keep the current operations. Um, one is to go back to the 1937-39. This 37-39 is the order of 37. That's when it was issued in 1939. There was a clarification of what it meant. So um, that's why you hear those two dates. Um, and in my mind, alternative one and two are exactly the same. I don't think Excel Energy is really that off of the, from the 37 order. Um, and I'll talk about that later. Um, alternative three is this, what they're calling public interest flow. This is the alternative where they would eliminate the winter drawdown and would increase the rate of water that must be discharged by Excel Energy at all times. Remember I mentioned 40 CFS? They're talking about raising that <coughs> to 200, well, uh, 80 to 200 CFS. Um, and then they have this fourth alternative, which we're not even going to talk about because they pretty much dismiss it themselves. So what DNR is proposing is this alternative three. So you're, you're going to hear that term uh, from a number of people, alternative three, because that's what's being proposed. So let's go through in detail what that is. Uh, first, the winter drawdown would be eliminated or reduced in the range of six inches to one foot. So instead of dropping basically a little over three and a half feet in the winter right now, we would be dropping six inches to a maximum of a foot in the winter. Um, if a winter drawdown were specified, they state 
the target would be to reach the drawdown levels by October 1st. Um, and the refill of the chain by April 15th. Um, where is this significant? Uh, it would mean that the right now drawdown pretty much stops or starts in October. You know, we wait till after Colorama, um, basically to the end of the recreational season, and then Excel Energy starts to draw the lake down. Um, and those of you who live here, you've seen it. It's, it's a fairly slow process. Um, you know, there's been accusations that basically pull the plug and they create this flood downstream. The data doesn't really show that. You know, I think they've been fairly reasonable about trying to be um, lowering the levels at a reasonable rate. Um, so that would need to be eliminated. The drawdown, well, we're not dropping three feet now, we're only dropping six inches, so uh, it's going to take a lot less time, um, but it may affect part of September. Um, so we need to be aware of that. Um, water levels on the chain would be operated close to this, um, these, these relative numbers, 8.6 feet, so that would be the maximum height. And that's what you guys are used to um, for your summer lake levels, is somewhere around 7.5 to 8.6 feet. Um, but they stay here, um, would occasionally need to be lowered in order to meet downstream flow needs. And I'll talk about that in a second. They're recommending that we dramatically increase the rate of flow out of the lake during <coughs> summer. Um, they go on to say that the downstream target flows um, would be reduced in low water conditions once the lake reaches a specified level of 7 feet. So that is 1.6 feet lower than sort of what you're used to. And then they're saying at that point, uh, maybe we'll negotiate. Uh, on the release rate, and that would be during an extreme drought, something like 2005. Um, once the chain reaches that level, the owner, they state the owner of the dam would either need to consult with DNR to determine the required flow, uh, or a minimum flow would be specified in the order. Um, I'll just get on my soapbox here for a second. I have commented on behalf of the defense fund that I, I think there's a problem with this consulting DNR. Um, I worked at DNR for 16 years. DNR operates by committee. Nothing happens quickly in the agency. Um, maybe that's good and bad. Uh, but if you have to go form a group and try to come to consensus on what levels that should be, that could take literally weeks. I mean, I remember the agency, sometimes it could take you two months to get everyone in a room together just because of schedule conflicts. Um, you, you can't wait that long in the middle of a drought to make a decision that you're going to change the outflow levels. By that time, the lake's dropped a foot. Um, so I, I would prefer that they specify something in the order, or at least a procedure that's not going to be something that's going to take a long time. Uh, I think that's kind of unrealistic. Um, and the last one, they specify ramping rates uh, would also need to be specified as part of the order to avoid quickly changing water levels and flows. And again, what they're meaning here is downstream. They don't want you to shut the dam off rapidly. They don't want you to discharge water too fast. So <clears throat> this table is what they're proposing. So. Again, to go over it, winter, we're basically going to eliminate the current winter drawdown to only six inches to a foot. Um, but what's also significant in this table is, look over on the right side column, and I realize some of you off the side can't read this, so I, I, or see it, so I'm going to uh, tell you what the numbers are. Um, so during the winter, now remember that number 40 I said to keep in your head, that's currently the minimum level that Excel Energy can discharge. They, they, they're not supposed to go below 40 CFS. DNR wants to change that so that during the winter, that lowest level would be 100 CFS. In early spring, would be 200 CFS. Um, early summer, 150. Mid-summer, 100. 
late summer, so late summer is August, September, 80, and then back in the fall to 100 CFS. So we're going from 40 up to a range of 80 to 200. Um, and again, they must discharge that at all times. So during a severe drought, that could significantly impact water levels, and I've got some graphs to show that in a second. Now, to put this all in perspective, at least from a water level standpoint, I tried to put this graph together. On the bottom here is from January to December, so a calendar year. Um, and let's see my little cursor here. So we've got right now the current winter drawdown of the 3.6 feet. We then refill April, May. Um, the lake is then maintained. And, and, and obviously the lake fluctuates depending on weather conditions. Um, we then have the fall drawdown and then you know, start at the winter condition. So what they're proposing is the lake would be operated within a very tight six inch range during the winter. Um, but there would be a, um, a 1.6 feet range during the summer. So um, we will, you will likely see under this proposal a much wider range of elevations on the chain during the summer months. Um, and it's only when you get down to this level in the summer under the proposed order that you could go negotiate with DNR to reduce the outflow of the lake. Otherwise you have to maintain those levels between, as I said, 80 and 200 CFS. Um, so the environmental assessment talks about a lot of things. It talks about positive benefits. And, and, I, and let me say, I don't disagree with everything that's in this environmental assessment. You know, there's a lot of potential positives. Um, they talk about you know, wetlands and other habitat on the lake systems could be improved. Uh, they talk about improvements to the downstream uh, resources. Um, in the assessment, they go into a lot of details about wetlands and aquatic plants and fish and birds and reptiles and etc. And I'm not going to go through all those um, because you can download it yourself and you all don't want to be here all day. Um, but what I do want to talk about is at least a couple of things that they're highlighting. Um, they do go to um, they make a specific point about some of the uh, Indian rights issues in the area. As, as you know, this is part of uh, ceded territory from the Chippewa tribes. Uh, so they do talk about wild rice as a, as a specific area of interest, uh, trying to improve wild rice on the lake system. Um, they do talk about walleye and muskie harvest, um, as, as you're aware of the Chippewa tribes have the right to harvest these species. Um, but they also go into a lot of detail about sturgeon downstream, lake sturgeon. Um, and reading the document, it's very clear that this is one of the big driving forces of why DNR is proposing this, is that they want to improve sturgeon habitat right below the rest of the lake. 